We continue today with chapter 29, The Forgiving Dream. The slave of idols is a willing slave. For willing he must be to let himself bow down and worship to what has no life, and seek for power in the powerless. What happened to the Holy Son of God that this could be his wish? To let himself fall lower than the stones upon the ground, and look to idols that they raise him up. Hear then your story in the dream you made, and ask yourself if it be not the truth that you believe that it is not a dream. A dream of judgment came into the mind that God created perfect as himself. And in that dream was heaven changed to hell, and God made enemy unto his son. How can God's son awaken from the dream? It is a dream of judgment. So must he judge not, and he will awaken. For the dream will seem to last while he is part of it. Judge not, for he who judges will have need of idols, which will hold the judgment off from resting on himself. Nor can he know the self he has condemned. Judge not, because you make yourself a part of evil dreams, where idols are your, quote, true identity and your salvation from the judgment laid in terror and in guilt upon yourself. All figures in the dream are idols, made to save you from the dream. Yet they are part of what they have been made to save you from. Thus does an idol keep the dream alive and terrible, for who could wish for one unless he were in terror and despair? And this the idol represents, and so its worship is the worship of despair and terror, and the dream from which they come. Judgment is an injustice to God's Son, and it is justice that who judges him will not escape the penalty he laid upon himself within the dream he made. God knows of justice, not of penalty, but in a dream of judgment you attack, and are condemned, and wish to be the slave of idols, which are interposed between your judgment and the penalty it brings. There can be no salvation in the dream as you are dreaming it, for idols must be part of it to save you from what you believe you have accomplished, and have done to make you sinful, and put out the light within you. Little child, the light is there. You do but dream, and idols are the toys you dream you play with. Who has need of toys but children? They pretend they rule the world, and give their toys the power to move about and talk and think and feel and speak for them. Yet everything their toys appear to do is in the minds of those who play with them. But they are eager to forget they made them up the dream in which their toys are real, nor recognize their wishes are their own. Nightmares are childish dreams. The toys have turned against the child who thought he made them real. Yet can a dream attack? Or can a toy grow large and dangerous and fierce and wild? This does the child believe because he fears his thoughts and gives them to the toys instead. And their reality becomes his own, because they seem to save him from his thoughts. Yet do they keep his thoughts alive and real, but seem outside himself, where they can turn against him for his treachery to them. He thinks he needs them, that he may escape his thoughts, because he thinks the thoughts are real. And so he makes of anything a toy, to make his world remain outside himself and play that he is but a part of it. There is a time when childhood should be past and gone forever. Seek not to retain the toys of children. Put them all away, for you have need of them no more. The dream of judgment is a children's game, 
in which the child becomes the father, powerful but with the little wisdom of a child. What hurts him is destroyed, what helps him blessed, except he judges this as does a child who does not know what hurts and what will heal. And bad things seem to happen, and he is afraid of all the chaos in a world he thinks he is, is governed by the laws he made. Yet, is the real world unaffected by the world he thinks is real? Nor have his laws been changed because he does not understand. The real world still is but a dream, except the figures have been changed. They are not seen as idols which betray. It is a dream in which no one is used to substitute for something else nor interpose between the thoughts the mind conceives and what it sees. No one is used for something he is not, for childish things have all been put away. And what was once a dream of judgment, now has changed into a dream where all is joy, because that is the purpose that it has. Only forgiving dreams can enter here, for time is almost over. And the forms that enter in the dream are now perceived as brothers, not in judgment, but in love. Forgiving dreams have little need to last. They are not made to separate the mind from what it thinks. They do not seek to prove the dream as being dreamed by someone else. And in these dreams a melody is heard that everyone remembers though he has not heard it since before all time began. Forgiveness, once complete, brings timelessness so close, the song of heaven can be heard, not with the ears, but with the holiness that never left the altar that abides forever deep within the Son of God. And when he hears this song again, he knows he never heard it not, and where is time, when dreams of judgment have been put away? Whenever you feel fear in any form, and you are fearful if you do not feel a deep content, a certainty of help, a calm assurance heaven goes with you, be sure you made an idol and believe it will betray you. For beneath your hope that it will save you, lie the guilt and pain of self-betrayal and uncertainty, so deep and bitter that the dream cannot conceal completely all your sense of doom. Your self-betrayal must result in fear, for fear is judgment, leading surely to the frantic search for idols and for death. Forgiving dreams remind you that you live in safety and have not attacked yourself. So do your childish terrors melt away, and dreams become a sign that you have made a new beginning, not another try to worship idols and to keep attack. Forgiving dreams are kind to everyone who figures in the dream, and so they bring the dreamer full release from dreams of fear. He does not fear his judgment, for he has judged no one, nor has sought to be released through judgment from what judgment must impose. And all the while he is remembering what he forgot, when judgment seemed to be the way to save him from its penalty. And from the workbook, Lesson 233. I give my life to God to guide today. Father, I give you all my thoughts today. I would have none of mine. In place of them, give me your own. I give you all my acts as well, that I may do your will instead of seeking goals which cannot be obtained and wasting time in vain imaginings. 
today I come to you. I will step back and merely follow you. Be you the guide, and I the follower who questions not the wisdom of the infinite, nor love whose tenderness I cannot comprehend, but which is yet your perfect gift to me. Today we have one guide to lead us on, and as we walk together, we will give this day to him with no reserve at all. This is his day, and so it is a day of countless gifts and mercies unto us. Amen.